we got a look at some new Dingo Dial updates along with two new maps. Let's talk about it. What's up guys, Canadian Guy here and I am back with a brand new Crash Team Rumble video. I know, I know, I got my shades on, but I currently have an eye infection and bright lights actually really hurt my eyes. So today's information is gonna be brought to you by, well, cool guy a i suppose now we are right around the corner before crash team rumble launches and i couldn't be more excited seriously i've barely been able to play any games since the beta but over the course of the summer game fest we actually have been able to see two brand new maps along with a dingo dial card reveal that shows off a new skin and some gameplay updates for the thick lad First off, let's start with one of the new maps that we saw lots of gameplay for. That is Bogged Down. GameSpot was able to release some exclusive gameplay of the stage. Now the clip is 8 minutes long and the gameplay is, uh, well, it's, it's gameplay. It's admittedly a, a bit of a tough watch for someone who knows how to play the game already. Especially for someone who actually already knows how to play Dingo Dial. But, we don't know the circumstances. It's possible that this person was their first crack at the game. And they only had time for one shot at recording. So, I'll be showing just some of the cool things that I saw from the gameplay. While linking the original 8 minutes below if you want to go and check it out yourself. We can see here that the basic relic station is called the Bouncing Bubble. Now, while we actually never see it in action looking at the roadmap here i think it's safe to assume that the bubble will be used to traverse the icky sticky swamp that surrounds the players the next thing that i noticed is that well look at the dead center of the map what do you see ah both the enemy and ally banks <laughs> that's right ladies and gents for this map the banks are right beside each other making this an absolute gong show of a time you also can briefly hear the announcer but notice that he's been toned down and has more of a distant echo effect take a listen Enemy team boost expired. we also can see some of the attacks from female entropy where she seems to be able to slam the ground and shoot dark orbs in different directions from around her along with being able to fire what looks like a laser line projectile looking like some of the lasers from the original entropy boss fight in crash bandicoot 3 warped also in this moment here we actually get a sneak peek at the embryo monster form and how much damage he can do as he basically two shots a half health dingo dial yeah, uh, that hurts. Also, we can see some of Brio's little goopy creations crawling around and causing trouble throughout the footage. Now, remember how the banks were side by side? Toys for Bob thought to themselves, how can we make this map even crazier? I know, in the small gap that separates the banks, let's put the epic relic station right there. This map is literally amping up the chaos. Now, when the epic relic station is filled, so 30 relics, a Wumpa Bat that has over 1,000 Wumpa Fruit actually starts making its way to the team's bank that activated it. However, the enemies can actually attack this Wumpa payload and reduce the amount of Wumpa it would cash in for the opposing team. In the gameplay, the team actually didn't defend the Wumpa Bat and it wasn't able to drop any of its Wumpa payload. We also got to see the sticky TNT crate in action, and when it detonates it does jeez, uh, half of Dingo Dial's health. <laughs> yeah, that thing is going to be... Uh, scary throughout the gameplay we can see two ripper roos running through the map but the moment that i want to point out is right here where he actually throws himself into a cannon and proceeds to fire himself across the map and into his own bank telling me that ripper Roo is probably an incredibly mobile blocker the last thing I noticed is actually not in the gameplay itself, but the thumbnail for the gameplay, as we see that Embryo actually has a caveman themed skin. Now, there's a couple of other things that happened in this gameplay, but overall that's the majority of what I saw from GameSpot's gameplay. Now, if this looks all chaotic to you and you can't make any sense of Crash Team Rumble, do not worry, because I already have a full list of guides finished 
for Crash Team Rumble called Rumble 101. So if you want to see those guides so that you can dominate right when the game launches or after the game launches, make sure to subscribe and follow along. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Now we move on to the next level, Tar Valley. The only in-game gameplay that we have of this map is from the recent Dingo Dial card reveal and from this over-the-shoulder cam footage. While watching the cam footage, you can get a sense of how the map actually works, but of course there's some unclear details, like the relic stations, so let me fill you in on some of those. The basic relic stations spawns slowing mushrooms, causing enemies to get dizzy and slow down when they touch them, very much like the mushrooms in Dino Dash during the chase scenes. The epic relic station is, yep, our favorite plank of insanity would, Aku Aku. But Aku Aku works a bit different from the other epic relic stations and is a bit different from all the other crash games. When you activate him, everyone on your team gets Aku Aku, but only a portion of his total power. Aku Aku will fully heal you and give you a nice little speed boost, but everyone getting an Aku Aku is not the only thing that happens when you activate this relic station. When you activate it, little Aku Aku crates also spawn all across the map. If you hit a second Aku Aku box, he heals you for even more and gives you an even faster movement speed buff. Then, if you get one more box, you are given the full power of Aku Aku. You become completely invulnerable to damage and move faster than Crash has ever moved before. Look at him go, he's just zooming! Making Wumpa turn-ins very easy, cause, well, you don't take any damage. Now, in terms of an actual clear view of the total map, we haven't quite gotten one yet. But, during Dingo Dial's recent card reveal, Tar Valley was the background of the card. Sadly, the reveal was built for TikTok in mind, so it's not very clear for us typical widescreen viewers. But, I was actually able to stitch together and Photoshop one complete image that gives us a bit more of a complete idea as to what the stage will look like. Additionally, while Dingo Dial was being shown off, a new power was shown. It's simply called Garbage Dump. I'm the trash man. I come out, I throw trash all over, the, all over the ring, and then I start eating garbage. According to the description and gameplay, Garbage Dump falls and explodes when it lands, dealing area of effect damage, or AoE damage. However, there is an interesting note on the bottom saying that the damage area adjusts on banks and gems which is interesting because we have never seen that before on any of the other powers. It's possible that further tuning has been made to powers when it comes to them spawning and landing on gem pads and banks, or this might be specifically for garbage dump. We'll just have to see when the game comes out. Also, during the Dingo Dial gameplay, they showed a bunch of different combos from our favorite Thick Lad. One of them, of course, was the Vac Pull combo. But notice how the Vac Pull suck in effect looks completely different compared to the beta. It's much more cone shaped and less circular and oblong and weird. This was a complaint that many people had with the beta, including myself. So seeing that Toys for Bob is listening is awesome. And finally, before they showed off all the combos of Dingo Dial, they showed off a couple of his skins. We have seen two of them before, but the newest entry is Shark Dingo Dial, which is a completely new skin that we have never seen before. Now, there is a screenshot of some skins floating around that has been data mined from Crash Bandicoot 4, and Shark Dingo Dial was one of those skins. So soon enough, I want to pull that screenshot up again and re-explore it and re-look into it, as it may hint towards more future skins coming soon. If you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe. And again, I'll be releasing a bunch of guide videos called Rumble 101, where I explain how to play each character and how to play the game overall. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video and or live stream. Bye bye